So, Earthlings. Don't know why I did that. Hey, Earthlings, how's you doing? Now, this is going to be an interesting one for me. This is an introduction to the work of Tom Reagan. And that's a ridiculous thing for me to find myself doing. In the sense that Tom Reagan should, in the animal rights movement, need no introduction whatsoever. When Reagan died in 2017, I that was a time when I almost left the movement because I was so sickened by the way that this movement had uh, treated Reagan. I almost did a Francione and uh, left the animal rights movement. But like Reagan, I decided to stay. But things have got no better, really. I mean, here we're talking about the originator of rights-based animal rights. I uh, saw a, a Facebook uh, post uh, recently when someone said I'd never heard of this guy. There was um, a, a kind of filmed podcast recently, in the last few days, uh, which talked about deontology, Reagan's philosophical position, with no mention of Reagan, although it was uh, about uh, other animals. So things have got no better in that sense. It's a, it's a little bit weird uh, for me in the sense that the person that laid down the foundation of animal rights is virtually unknown within animal rights. But more than that is deliberately sidelined by the animal rights movement. You know, there is something in the movement called the Animal Rights Hall of Fame. And it wasn't until Reagan died in which he was inducted into this Animal Rights Hall of Fame. You know, this is an interesting tangent perhaps, but uh, when Brian Clough took over from Don Reavy uh, as manager of Leeds United Football Club. Now, uh, I'm from Yorkshire and we always used to call him Don Revy, but uh, he actually, his actual name was Don Reavy. But when Clough took over from Reavy, he got the team together and he said that all your medals can just be chucked in the bin because you didn't win any of them fairly. I have a kind of similar feeling about all those people who was inducted into the Animal Rights Hall of Fame before Reagan because this shallow award that became possible before the person who formulated animal rights theory. I mean, did any of them say, how can I accept this if Tom Reagan's not here, if Tom Reagan's not at the top of the list? You know, it baffles me. So, Tom Reagan initiated animal rights as a theoretical stance and I always say rights-based animal rights. In other words, he took animal rights seriously. And famously, he authored this book, The Case for Animal Rights, in 1983. And as I've said in previous videos, I tend not to recommend that as a first text, but this one, uh, in defense, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'll come on to that later, uh, Defending Animal Rights, from two 2001. The reason I said in defense was this book. Now, this is a bit of interesting movement history. This is 1985, and this is a book edited by Peter Singer. And there's been, I wouldn't call it love hate, but there's an interesting relationship between Singer and Reagan in the sense that um, they despised each other's philosophical position. Uh, so much so that in the obituary to Reagan, they said that it was impossible for them to kind of endorse each other for that. In fact, in a famous speech from 1989, Tom Reagan declared Peter Singer's position and therefore the position of the animal rights movement morally bankrupt. 
And so if we take that seriously, the dominant position of our movement is morally bankrupt. It's interesting, isn't it? And yet Reagan's challenge to utilitarianism, which is what we're talking about, was never fully embraced and was in fact marginalized. In fact, uh, this is the second edition of In Defense of Animals. Uh, interestingly, this one is uh, with the US spelling, whereas this one's the British um, spelling. And in the second edition, there are only two mentions of Reagan. And um, Singer essentially tries to put Reagan into the dustbin of history, saying there's no need to reprint uh, his um, original essay, which featured in the first book. And perhaps there's a clue in the beginning of this, which I'm going to read. This is 1985, The Case for Animal Rights, Tom Reagan. I regard myself as an advocate of animal rights, as part of the animal rights movement. That movement, as I conceive it, is committed to a number of goals, including the total abolition of the use of animals in science, the total dissolution of commercial animal agriculture, the total elimination of commercial and sport hunting and trapping. So abolitionist, um, in other words. Reagan goes on, there are, I know, people who profess to believe in animal rights, but do not avow these goals. Factory farming, they say, is wrong. It violates animals rights, but traditional Animal agriculture is right, or is all right. Now, there's actually something wrong with that. Because in this movement, we don't even say that. We don't say, oh, factory farming is wrong because it violates other animals' rights, but other types of farming uh, are okay. We don't say that. You know, we don't say it violates other animals' rights, do we? We say, oh, it's cruel, have mercy. Because we're not an animal rights movement. And this is the entire crux. And this is the kind of fascinating position of Tom Reagan. Is the fact that even now, after his death, he's still challenging the animal rights movement to be an animal rights movement. Because none of the groups that use the label animal rights take an animal rights stance. You won't find Reagan's books and quotes in their literature. All the new YouTube superstars haven't got a clue about Tom Reagan, haven't got a clue about philosophical animal rights. They're still talking about cruelty. They're still in the welfare paradigm. They're still happiest uh, there. So Tom Reagan is an interesting position because he was ignored in life, he's currently ignored in death, and yet his challenge to our movement is still massively relevant. Do we actually want to explore the meaning of animal rights or are we content to continue these decades of just using it as a label because that's all we can do with it. We want to make up animal rights as we go along. And mainly we want to stay in the welfare paradigm. We want to stay talking about cruelty. And we want to talk about suffering and we want to talk about having mercy for other animals. We don't want to make the stronger claim that other animals are rights bearers that our use of them is a rights violation and we have no right to do it. These are strong animal rights claims. This is part of the rights view developed by Tom Reagan. The position that we, the animal rights movement, the animal rights movement has rejected year after year, decade after decade.
we have rejected animal rights within the animal rights movement. I often draw an analogy with the human rights movement. You know, be interesting, wouldn't it? If the leading philosopher in the human rights movement didn't believe in human rights as the leading author in the animal rights movement for many years, Peter Singer doesn't believe in moral rights. Interesting, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to let Reagan speak for himself. He certainly doesn't need someone like me to do it. And I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to introduce you with the links below to Tom Reagan, who originated animal rights theory. He came up with the case for animal rights, which continues to be ignored by the so-called pathetic animal rights movement. See you next time.